All right, Ninja Nerds, in this video, we're going to talk about hematocrit. So what is hematocrit? Hematocrit, or also called your packed cell volume, is just the percent of your erythrocytes, or your red blood cells, for that entire amount of blood that you're taking out of the individual. So pretend I take about a millimeter cubed of blood from my brachial vein, right? So I take about a millimeter cubed of blood from my brachial vein or from the median cubital vein, wherever. I take that blood, about a microliter or a millimeter cubed, I put it within the test tube, right? I centrifuge it. The centrifuge will separate the blood based upon densities into three distinct layers that you're gonna see right here. So we centrifuge this blood, right? We coat it with heparin because we don't want the blood to clot. So what you're gonna see is three distinct layers. This layer here on the bottom is the most dense component and that's your erythrocyte layer. This green layer sandwiched in between the plasma and the red blood cell layer is called the buffy coat. And the buffy coat is gonna be important. We'll talk about these, just giving an introduction. And then this blue layer right here is called the plasma. Okay, and we'll talk about what's in the plasma. So again, what is hematocrit though? Or another name for it is called pack cell volume. Let me write that over here. So again, another word for hematocrit is, we can say PCV, which stands for pack cell volume. So now, let's go through each one of these components. So if we come over here first, let's say we go into this first layer right here. So you spin the blood, right, and we separate out these layers. This layer is the erythrocyte layer, okay? So this is gonna be consisting of our RBCs our red blood cells, right, our erythrocytes. Now, we already know the function of erythrocytes, so we're not gonna go over that. Let's go over and say again, what would be the percentage out of this? So if this is a whole microliter, so how much is this again? From here all the way to here is about a microliter of blood, which again is equal to about a millimeter cubed of blood, right? How much of that would actually account for this, this fraction right here? It would be about 0.45. So this would account for about 0.45 out of that microliter. So about 0.45 microliters. But if I take that 0.45 microliters of my red blood cell layer over the one microliter of all total blood and multiply that by 100, what does that give me? That gives me 45%. This is on average the amount, this is on average our hematocrit or our erythrocyte component of the blood percentage wise. This is the normal amount. Obviously for women it might have a standard deviation about two or three less than for males it might be about a standard, devi standard deviation of two or three above that. Okay? But anything below this, so what if someone has something below that value? So if there's actually going to be, let's say that this person has less than 45%, what is that called? It's called anemia. What is it called whenever they have greater than 45%. It's called polycythemia, right? And we talked about these in individual videos, right? So again, that's pretty much it for the red blood cell layer. No, it's about 45%. Most dense component consists of your red blood cells, and anything less or greater than that can uh, induce these two symptoms or conditions, right? What is this green little layer right here? This green layer right here is called the buffy coat. Let's do this in black right here. So this right here is called the buffy coat. So the buffy coat consists of two different types of formed elements, all right? One of those formed elements is going to be platelets. The other formed elements is going to be white blood cells or your leukocytes, right? Now, the buffy coat only accounts, if you take out of this fraction out of the whole, it only accounts for about, um, not even 1%, almost less than 1%. So almost about less than 1%, okay, out of this in total fraction, right? Now, the buffy coat consists of platelets and white blood cells. Platelets, if you take these guys, what are their functions? Their functions are designed to be able to plug up any type of damaged blood vessels, right? So if we have any type of, oh, first off, how many uh, platelets, if you take that millimeter cubed of blood, how many platelets would you find within that? You'd find about 100 in 50,000 to about 450,000 per microliter of blood. That's about how much you find in these individuals, right? If you take the white blood cells, it would be about 4,800 to about 10,800, but we're just going to put 11,000 per microliter of blood. If someone has a white blood cell count below 4,800, so let's say that they have below 4,000 less than 4,000. 800, this is called leukopenia, leukopenia. And if they have 
greater than 11,000 per microliter. This is called, specifically you can call it leukocytosis, right? So leukocytosis. And this could be indicative of an infection or maybe depending upon how high it is, leukomoid reaction or maybe even leukemia lymphoma, right? So that's that part there. I didn't mention the amount for red blood cells. For red blood cells, if you take a microliter of blood, they're gonna have about five to six million, right? So five to six million red blood cells per microliter of blood. Okay, now, platelets. If you have less than 150,000 for platelets, so let's say you have less than 150,000 for platelets, this is called thrombocytopenia. And if you have greater than 450,000, this is called thrombocytosis. Okay, so thrombocytopenia, obviously you would have increased chances of bleeding, thrombocytosis, you'd actually have more clotting formation, right? All right, now for this last layer here, guys. All right, this last layer here is actually gonna be called our plasma layer. So this is our plasma layer. And again, just like we did with the red blood cell layer, it's accounting for about, you know, 55%. So if we take, it's about 0.55 microliters over one whole microliter of total blood, multiply by 100, and that's gonna give us approximately about 55%. So now plasma, what is the components of plasma? Well, the components of plasma mainly are water. So about 90 to 93% of it is actually just water. Why is water so important? Because it's a universal solvent. It's what helps to be able to transport our red blood cells. It's good at dissolving certain types of solutes and proteins and molecules and nutrients with inside of the actual blood vessel, right? So it's a very important solvent. We absolutely need water. All right, so it controls our blood volume and our blood pressure, so many things. Our, another thing that's really important is our plasma proteins, which account for about 8% of the plasma. So 8% of it is actually gonna be plasma proteins. And what are these plasma proteins? So what are these plasma proteins? These ones, the main ones, I'm gonna mention each one. Let's say we talk about albumin. So the first one here is actually albumin. And what does albumin do? Albumin actually regulates the water balance inside of our blood vessels, right? So he controls the osmotic pressure. He accounts for about 60% of these plasma proteins. The other ones are going to be your globulins. And your globulins, you have three types, alpha and beta, which are usually kind of grouped together, right? So alpha and beta. And then the other one is gamma globulins. So what does alpha and beta do? Alpha and beta are usually transport proteins. So these are very good transport proteins. So they transport substances that aren't soluble within the blood plasma, like what? Like certain types of metals, for example, like iron. Iron can't be in the bloodstream freely circulating because it can cause free radical reactions. So we have to bind him to transferrin. Uh, certain types of hormones that aren't soluble within the bloodstream, like thyroxine or T3 and T4, they have to be bound to thyroxine binding globulins, all right? So that's just an example, quick example of our transport proteins. What about gamma globulins? Gamma globulins are your antibodies, okay? So these are like antibodies. And these are produced by your plasma cells, by your plasma cells, which are uh, differentiated B cells. And they're good for fighting off different types of pathogens, right? By opsonizing them or activating certain types of pathways. All right, so that's the big components. The other things are kind of like, you know, what most people should know. It's gonna transport respiratory gases like oxygen and CO2 and even nitric oxide. It's gonna transport electrolytes. So it transports electrolytes, right? What are these electrolytes that it transports? This could be like sodium, potassium, chlorine, and we could just keep going on and on and on, right? What else does it have within it? It also has a couple other things that we'll mention. Let's say nutrients. So nutrients is very important. Some of these nutrients are gonna be things like glucose. Glucose is very critical, amino acids, fatty acids, right? So tons and tons of different types of substances that you can find as nutrient-wise, right? What else? Enzymes, enzymes, different types of enzymes. Antimicrobial enzymes, functional enzymes, right? What else? You can even have hormones. So you can have hormones within the bloodstream that, because that's their main form of transport, right? And then one last thing to finish it all off, you can also have metabolic waste. So metabolic waste product, right? 
And what are these metabolic waste products? Could be lactic acid, could be uric acid, could be creatinine, could be all kinds of different substances. What is the purpose of this? Well, usually the plasma is responsible for being able to transport this metabolic waste to the kidney where it can be excreted, right? Or it takes it to the liver because the liver can excrete it out through the feces, right? All right, so pretty much in a nutshell, that gives us what we need to know about this. Now, we're not gonna go into certain types of imbalances within the plasma because it'll just get too insane. For right now, just know that these are the constituents of the plasma. All right, so pretty much guys, in a nutshell, this gives us everything we're gonna need to know about the hematocrit or the pack cell volume. See you, engineers.